Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we're going to talk about something that I was going to say everyone's talking about, but that's not the truth. <laughs> no one has been talking about this actually. Uh, James Charles has released his makeup brand and I have kind of talked about this when he's been talking about the process of making it. Um, first of all, I think it's way too late and I think the name James Charles is kind of tarnished and is the reason that most brands don't work with him, which is why this is, in his words, an independent release, which may or may not be the truth. We've heard a lot of people rely on this independent release and then we're, we later find out that that's not the truth. <clears throat> Jacqueline Hill. And so I don't really know what to take from that, but this is like a store only thing. You can only get this through James Charles himself, um, you know, online. And if you're under the age of 16 and a young boy, probably at his house. But we're going to get to this because a lot of people have been talking about this. Apparently his reveal video is very interesting. I kind of want to go through the website and I kind of just want to talk about the fact that like, number one, I think the oversaturation of I, I actually think, think most industries are very oversaturated right now when it comes to releasing products. I always said it about makeup, but I now say it about skincare as well. You know, makeup really was a breeding ground, specifically within influencers of, I'm going to release 10 palettes a year and you're going to want all of them. And then years down the line, people are like, holy shit, I have 10 palettes from one creator that I got within one year and I haven't used any of them because no one needs that amount of makeup. It was like an over... Con consume like over consuming things right and then people figured that out and then people turned to doing that with skincare buying all of the different kinds of oils and creams and you know all their celebrities were coming out with them and then it was like too many celebrities are coming out with them every influencer it was like well what am i to buy and then we turned into the era that we're in now which is actually kind of my favorite era that we've been in as a worldwide of uh, consumerism, which is the simplicity. Like we do not need 10 different makeup palettes that are going to give us the same thing. We do not need 10 different colorful palettes because we only like the blue and green in this one or that one. And with skincare, we don't need this many brands. We don't need this many creams. We just need what works for us. And I kind of like that we're at that because also I'm someone who likes to hold on to a lot of the products that I have. So whenever it's kind of like the trend of having less, I kind of feel like, okay, I'm just following a trend, um, even though it's probably what's best for me because I really can just, you know, buy a lot and be like, ooh, now I'm putting 15 different products on my skin. Why is my skin burning? Um, but anyway, I just think it's too late to be releasing a makeup brand. And I also think James Charles releasing one and it focusing around the name James Charles, we're aware of the allegations. It's just kind of, it feels like not only it's missed the mark, and I'm, I'm trying my best not to just be a hater right now, it, because me and James have our history. I'm trying to be subjective here. Like, we're over the era of needing new brands, right? Like all the celebrities have tried and given their brands and most of them have not worked. And the only ones that have worked like Fenty or Rare Beauty have been ones that have had a purpose behind it, which is Fenty Beauty in inclusivity, which most brands did not have. And Rare Beauty, this concept of no makeup makeup and they don't even focus heavily on Selena Gomez or Rihanna. So an influencer releasing one especially it not being available in stores because no stores want to work with James Charles. It just kind of feels like too late and a missed opportunity. But I want to go in this with an open mind, kind of hear what he's saying and see if I would be interested. Because, I mean, I've spoken about the likes of other influencers who I might not necessarily agree with them or even like them. And if they release a product, I go, that's a good design. That's a good concept. That's a good product. And so, or that's a good campaign. So I'm interested to see this with James, but one thing I want to say again before I get into this, sorry I'm like saying so much, with James, he spent so much time in the lead up to his launch of makeup saying that it was co like coming and every time it would be delayed. He's like hinted the release of his makeup for many years now and it never, never, never came. And he says the reason for this was because he wanted to perfect it. I honestly think that's bullshit. And I think it was, he was probably working with companies and they dropped him after allegations. I have no proof of this. This is all speculation. I believe that's what it is. Because why you, would you not release your, your brand even just sticking your name on something at the peak of your fame whenever you also release makeup products at the peak of your fame. It doesn't make sense, and I think that he's just flat out lying. That's just my opinion, right? So we're going to get into this, and the other thing is I like giving people credit for marketing and packaging and ideas behind a brand, 
But James did this concept of literally begging his audience for ideas and begging his audience for how should he market it. And he openly said the the market is so oversaturated that he needs to know how to stand out. And he was asking his audience for all these ideas, which by itself is fine. But he started doing it so much that it turned into are you asking your audience for ideas so you don't have to pay people to create them for you? Again, just speculation, but it felt like before the time his brand is even released, I feel like I've already fucking made it. You know what I mean? Like I've already made all the things. I, I was in that lab making them. And that's, you know, kind of the concept of the Shane Dawson, Jeffree Star conspiracy palette. But the difference in that is James and Shane, or sorry, Jeffrey and Shane made that series creating the products and making you feel involved at a time when people were buying makeup a lot and were they didn't care if the product was good they just loved influencers i think the hold that influencers have to sell products and stuff is not there in 2023 it's not even there with celebrities but anyway what we're gonna do by the way my screen is flipped right now for the reason of james's team love to just automatically strike whenever i watch his videos so i flipped it and then i'm watching this for fair use this is flipped for a reason we're gonna get to um, his launch of it. Then I want to get to the website. Then I want to get to like the campaign behind it. And I want to see, um, it's interesting. I mean, there's 12,000 dis or 12,000 dislikes on this, which isn't necessarily bad. Um, but that's in an era where dislikes are not shown on YouTube anymore. I literally have like a Chrome add on to see dislikes. So people without knowing that their dislikes are going to be shown are disliking this video. And I've been seeing a lot of criticism of the brand, but we're going to get to, let's let him sell it to us, right? I want to be fair. Let James sell us this right now. I'm here to be sold. Come on. Sell it to me, baby. Hello, you guys. James Charles here, and welcome hey. back to my YouTube channel. This moment... By the way, this is sped up because this is 17 minutes, and I'm not willing to sit down and listen to 17 minutes of James Charles at normal speed. So if you... I'm going to turn captions on, but if this is a bit overwhelming for you, just please know that I think it's within our best interest to not sit here and listen to all 17 minutes at zero speed. So we have sped this up a little bit. I'll actually put it at 1.5. That's fine. Feels surreal. I cannot and I've just realized that the captions are flipped, so we can't do that. So I'm going to slow it down a little bit, and sorry about that. <laughs> is finally here to tell you guys all about the first launch of my new makeup brand, Painted. Go take a moment for the backdrop. Oh, I'm so excited. Now, I want to jump right into today's video. Personally, I've always found it very annoying when YouTubers are like, I've been working on this project for years and years and years. Well, I'm going to do that today because that is the true reality of the situation. Four years of blood, sweat, tears have gone into this brand. It's like Four years of blood, sweat, and tears have went into this brand. Yeah, not yours. I'm not yours. Not yours, babe identity, what it stands for, and I'm so excited to finally get to share it with you guys. Now, I read the comments. I know there's been a lot of excitement. We started hyping this up in April, so it's a long time coming, and I've also seen that there's a lot of questions, so before I delay any further, let's just get right into it. Let me tell you all about my new makeup brand, Painted. A massive comment criticism that I've seen quite a lot of from people both outside the makeup industry and within. Holy shit, I actually need to slow this down, and I'm someone who can't watch videos, not think. You know what? We apparently are going to be watching him at normal speed today. Holy shit, I can't even understand him, and I'm someone that needs to watch videos at a bigger, at like a faster speed. Holy shit, I, can, I can't even understand him. Has said that this brand has taken way too long to launch. Is it too late for James Charles to come out? Not rich looks! With his own makeup line? Who will buy James Charles' makeup brand? I know makeup takes a long time. I just know that he hasn't included me in this because I called his ass out for defending Colleen Ballinger and, and creating a smear campaign against me the way he fed into that as well. So I just know for a fact I'm not included in this. I have to produce, but it's already been two years. And trust and believe what I say. I agree. I understand the concerns, and I also understand the impact that this brand could have had in the peak of the makeup era, like 2017, 2018, 2019, but to do what I wanted to achieve with this brand in that time frame just wasn't possible. I definitely did not think that owning my own makeup brand would be easy, but I also did not think that it would be this difficult. I already had so much respect for my fellow brand owners before starting this project, but now, oh my god, it has skyrocketed. Let me tell you about some of the bumps in the road. In 2020, during the height of the pandemic, after working on the brand for months around I had completed ah, ooh. <laughs> ah, ooh, jump scare. what I thought was the final formula. I hosted a testing party with makeup. It just all looks so cheap. 
Artists and friends where participants were COVID tested, dividers at the stations, six feet apart, every single protocol you could possibly take. Shout out to my friend Lipstick Nick for letting us use her space at Pout, and I am so glad that I did that test because after the feedback from my friends, we made the decision to completely switch labs. This was not only because of a formula change, but the most important reason was it was a price change. At the last minute, the manufacturer tried to raise their costs on me, and I would no longer be able to sell you guys my Create paints at the price that I wanted to, which was super affordable. Think of all right, I'm going to be honest, everything I say in this video is just my opinion, and I have nothing of substance behind it, so just a little disclaimer, everything I'm saying is purely just my speculation and opinion. I think that's bullshit, and the reason I think it's bullshit is because I think that he was probably dropped from the lab that didn't want to work behind him. Again, no substance behind this. And the reason I think that is because he's sitting his ass down in the promo video and saying that he was willing to throw the brand under the bus, wait years past his peak, because he wasn't able to make the brand affordable for his audience. Please. Please. The, I can, in my opinion, that is such a sales tactic. You know, I waited years past my peak and now my brand isn't going to do so well because I wanted it to be affordable for you and we had to completely change. Babe, in my opinion, he was dropped. And also, he's saying affordability. Um, for the Create Paints that he's selling, I mean, we're talking... I mean, I'm on UK uh, right now on his website. We're, think, we're talking about a, a £150, which is like $200. So the affordability thing is not really even working on me. But I think that he was probably dropped because that full speech about, I didn't get to make it as affordable for my audience. It's a sales tactic to make you think, oh, I want to support it. Just my opinion. Just my opinion. About that. A completely finished paint, ready for sale, three years ago. But my mindset has always been, if it wasn't... I don't believe that. You were ready to go three years ago? You had everything ready three years ago, and you decided to scrap everything to make it affordable for your... I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I really don't believe it. Th so you're telling me three years ago, during the peak of James Charles being called out for allegations... Okay, here's what I think happened. That was the peak of allegations for James Charles. So either James knew that it wasn't safe to release a brand because it would be overshadowed. So either he didn't want to release it then. So it was probably the same manufacturers and it's just being released now. Or the manufacturers dropped him. I don't believe it's this thing he's saying about it, I wouldn't be able to make it affordable. Because why the fuck are you saying that and then to buy all the paints is like £150, $200? Right? I'm not putting it out. So we started over. To say this was just the tip of the iceberg is really like the understatement of a century. We immediately started looking for new labs. And when I tell you guys we were looking for labs all around the world, I have literally tried hundreds of samples from different manufacturers and labs. Finally, he goes, I have literally tried hundreds of samples and drops like five. <laughs> Of the same thing. We found one that was able to replicate our magic formula, and they happened to be only 20 minutes away here in LA. After finally finding my new lab, over the next three years, I spent hundreds of hours on the phone to my new manufacturer, testing products, going to the lab, and sharing as much information as I possibly could on social media with you guys. I loved getting your guys' feedback, and I cannot wait to do it again. I don't get it. So, if James had these products ready to go three years ago, and at a last minute, the manufacturers raised the price meaning he didn't want to release it because it wouldn't be affordable then why didn't he for months before they raised the price post the snippets of the products like he did a couple months ago when they were ready for this release when you were just creating them because by that logic you would have also been sharing the products three years ago if you were done them You know what I mean? You said you were ready to go three years ago, but they raised the price last minute. So you scrapped everything to make it affordable. So why did you never include your audience in the production of those products with that manufacturers when you did the entire time you were creating this year and you were showing every step of the way, but you had a finished product and you didn't include your audience three years ago? Bonk.
again for future products, but even the smallest changes required a complete reevaluation of the entire product and the chemistry that makes up the formula. And you guys know I'm a perfectionist too, so even up until a couple of weeks- It just looks so cheap. I'm, I, I'm not even saying that to be nasty or anything, right? It just- Okay, so artist set is $140 for the entire thing, okay? I'm gonna be honest, I'm not wowed. I'm not wowed. Love him or hate him, Jeffree Star will give you packaging. James is giving you simplicity, but it doesn't come across as simplicity. It comes across as you bought a white label and just stuck your name on it. Weeks ago, I was still in the lab perfecting right? and finalizing and approving the formula like I showed you guys on TikTok. So when I say that- I like simplicity, but whenever it looks cheap, you've lost me. We just finished these paints. We just finished them. Like seriously, a white chib, that's it. And it's like this size, by the way. I don't care how much I'm going to get used to the product. It's this size and it's like a white chib for $140. Now I want to talk to you guys about the campaigns. Oh my God. The marketing around this brand so far has been an absolute dream. You and also an absolute lie. Because if you remember, let me come back into focus. Hey, there we go. If you're, I don't know why I'm so overexposed today. Um, the marketing was also a lie. Because if you remember, remember James has been saying he's been working on this for three years. Well, I don't know why he wasn't showing any behind the scenes three years ago, but was manically showing us everything a couple months ago. He said that for his makeup campaign, he's launching a big thing where you can all submit your videos and he'll choose people of all backgrounds. He wants firefighters. He wants doctors. He wants teachers. He wants old people. He wants young people. He wants people of all genders to be a part of his makeup campaign. And I'm pretty sure he said, wouldn't it be so cool if I had a granny? But in his end, in the end of his marketing campaign, he only chose like low end influencers who push makeup so that they would then push makeup and give him good reviews. So he lied about his campaign on who he wanted so as many people would enter as possible, giving promo to his overall brand, which is smart, but it's really, really, really just crooked. It's really crooked to like give people false hope like that. Just you guys to... know I love doing makeup, but I love marketing too. So yeah, some tomatoes in the chat, please. Absolutely. Let's get more of them. Then it's so fun to get creative. The first thing that you guys saw was the commercial. Now, with this video, we didn't want to give everything away, but kind of treat it more of like a movie trailer. When brainstorming with the team, this concept came up and I was instantly obsessed. The brand identity is obviously mixing makeup and artistry together, so pulling those concepts into one was really, really cool for me. I want to say quick but massive thank yous to all the people who helped make this happen. Kaylee, the beautiful model who let me paint her face, my friend Jesus for helping me with the makeup, of course we have my team, but then also Ashley, the director, and her incredible team that helped actually create and shoot the commercial. I'm so proud of the finished product and I am so glad that you guys loved it as much as I did. Next was flying out our 10 artists that won our painted casting call to be in our first ever campaign. And let me just say, I think that this is the coolest thing my brand has done thus far. I know we haven't done much, okay? Not a lot has been on the table yet, but I had so much fun during this experience. For those of you who might not know, I ran a contest where amazing artists from all around around the world submitted videos to be in my brand's first ever campaign. They duetted my announcement video with their best makeup look and explained what makeup and expression meant to them. And he chose like all people that were already established with an audience whenever all he said beforehand was that he wants people of all different walks of life to show how much of a community his brand can have. But then he just used all those people for exposure and didn't choose any of them at all. Starting the brand off with a lie is crazy. Um, and I was completely overwhelmed. Hashtag James Charles campaign had over 10,000 video submissions by some of the most talented artists that I have ever seen. We picked the 10 artists that we did after so much back and forth between my team and I. I think it's crazy even looking at this and you're seeing no even, and I'm focusing on the old people thing because that was what he said. He was like, if I have a grandma and in his video, he's like, could we, we would have like a firefighter and a doctor. Didn't choose any of them. Picking only 10 was so challenging, but I ended up choosing who I did because of their love and passion for makeup, not only in their- And the fact that they had little bits of following already. But also on their entire social media pages and their bodies of work. We ended up having artists from the US, Canada, Trinidad, the UK, Zimbabwe, Argentina, and Thailand. Literally from like every corner of the globe. We flew them into- But it's not what you said in your campaign though, to use people to 
promote the brand. Play a lot of them for the first time, so we wanted to make sure they had a really fun experience. We decorated their hotel rooms, took them on a Hollywood tour bus all throughout the city, brought them to a nice little dinner, and then already, it was shoot day. After planning everything out, we realized that we had to photograph 30 four looks, 34 makeup looks in only one day. And let me tell you, we barely made it. But when we did, it was then that I knew that we picked superstars. These photos are gonna be all over the website and our socials for years to come. So make sure you guys keep your eyes out for them. And I am so proud of all 10 of my artists. Peyton, Jada, Chris, Pink, Kenny, Maya, Catalina, Arlene, and Karina, and Angel, I love you all. This is one of the hardest shoot days that I have ever been she on. She loves you. She. Nicole, Caesar, Ty, and Liv for the makeup. Sergio, Kat, and Haley on the hair. And finally, thank you to John Sams, Tati, and Jeff for their incredible unmatched photography and videography that made this campaign actually come to life. Now, the last thing that we did was a model shoot, and this was the concept that I was so excited to bring to life. In a completely different format, where that first shoot was focusing on showing how the paints work, how amazing they are, and the different colors, this shoot was the complete opposite it was all about just creativity and coming up with some really cool photos my makeup artist caesar indeed did the most beautiful avant-garde makeup looks on them while dust all right so they took a lot of photos great so now he talks about why he chose the concept of paint now you might be asking why paint i've been quoted in interviews many times actually saying that i was never going to come up with my own makeup line so definitely shot myself in the foot with that one but when i said that at the time it was true with there being so many brands out there the artist in me really wanted to create something unique and special and unique. not just slap my name on something and for a really long time didn't you slap your name on a morphe palette a couple years ago please i just didn't have the idea. But over the years, as I completed more and more- And Jeffrey said how it was made in China and it was like the cheapest shit to make. Makeup looks getting crazier and crazier every single time. That sounds like slapping your name on something. And my makeup table here in front of me that was covered in dozens of products making a complete mess. But I realized that I didn't have the one product that could truly do everything that I was looking for. So I finally realized that I wanted to release the makeup line with multi-use products right off the bat that artists of all different skill levels could use and thus create paints were born. When I started developing this formula four years ago now, paints really weren't that popular in the makeup market, but over the last couple of years- Oh my God, is he gonna say, he's gonna say it. He's gonna be like, but not every brand is coming out with them because it's true, like most brands do paints now. Is that what he's going to say? He's going to be like, but everyone has kind of copied our idea now. Like, everyone comes out with it. Now we looks like we're copying everyone. Okay, you were late with it. You know what I mean? Like, that's not... It's also not an original idea. Is that what he's going to say? I think it is. He's going to now be like, everyone is coming out with it, but we were like the first or something. Of course. By the way, these have been things that, yes, have been in the makeup industry for many, many, many years. Before 2020. 2020. 2020. Years, several brands have started to release them, which I'm not gonna lie, was not my favorite thing in the entire world, but Little Miss Gatekeeper over here. Just like how new brands are constantly trying to reformulate staple products in our makeup collections, I'm doing the same thing with my paints, and I'm very confident when I say, and also a little bit biased, <laughs> that my formula is the absolute best while keeping them very, very affordable. Okay, you are finally caught up on the last couple of years of what it took to bring this brand to life, but now Let's talk about the present. For my first launch, I'm going to be releasing my 10 artist paints called Create Paints, a detailed brush set, and a beauty sponge. Before I reveal the launch date and the prices, let's talk a little bit about what Create Paints actually are. Create Paints are a creamed matte pigment formula that- I'm gonna be honest, no matter how vibrant these colors are, for that small ass chib that literally looks like you just bought it on AliExpress and you're expecting me to pay like 150 pound? It does just look like dollar store paints. I like- I understand the concept of things looking so simple and blah, 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 blah. But like, seriously, like don't put that price tag on with it and then preach to us about how it's affordable. It dries down in about 30 seconds and can be used in many different ways throughout your makeup routine. You can create a wing or graphic liner. You can cut your crease, blend it out for an easy smoky eye. The possibilities are literally endless. And before you get scared, don't worry. Next Friday, I'm releasing a video right here on my YouTube channel where I teach you guys every single oh, way thank God. you can possibly use the paint. Thank and God. it might seem like they are product only for artists, but trust and believe what I say, everybody of any skill level can- And anyone with a credit card use these paints you just wait and see let's finally get into the fun part with the swatches with the colors in the all right so there's him talking about it he goes through colors brushes blah 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 so we've heard him say and by the way i saw a clip of him is this it any sultry makeup look this is going wait. to be 
put it in your water line. You can blend it out for a smoky eye. Any sultry makeup look oh, here is, it is. is going to be your best friend. This is going to be the last part that we watch. I thought this was very interesting. I saw this on Instagram. Don't just take it from me, though, okay? You guys are going to die when I tell you this. Beyonce's been nervous. Use this on her on tour. Raquel, I love you so much. I could not even... Beyonce has worn my pants. You guys, the mother... Queen B has worn ink and also Pinky Promise on her tour. If Beyonce can wear these paints and dance around on stage being a legend for hours and hours and hours straight and they still stay on and look amazing, you can do it too. Finally, our- You know what's so tacky about that? What is so- Oh my god, we're at 9-11 uh, viewers right now. No, 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 no. You know what's so tacky about that? The fact that Beyonce does not know that she was wearing those the same way any celebrity does not know what is being put on their face and to use Beyonce as a way to promote your brand as if she herself is the single promoter of it. Like, that can, like, cause some, like... Big celebrities have an issue with that. And also, he was like, Beyonce's wearing this pink shade and then shows a smoky eye that she's wearing. But anyway, besides the point, using, like, Beyonce without her consent to promote your brand and it being the only part of this entire video that's gone viral is so ethically wrong. So ethically wrong. So ethically wrong. Um, anyway, let me, I'm going to really quickly have to flip this again. Hey, Oh, I'm back. Um, so on the Instagram, just messy. And I mean that with the utmost respect. I mean, it's hard not to make a very vibrant release look messy, but so many colors, you know what I mean? Like, so many reds and, like, I get that that's the thing, but, like, in the era of simplicity and beige and, you know, like that, like, it's so bright and it's so... Like, look at this. He's literally using Beyonce as the sole reason to promote this brand which is so ethically wrong but also all the comments are like okay but does beyonce know she's wearing it and everyone's like i'm curious how you know that she actually wore it because i checked the original post of her in this picture and you're not mentioned or tagged anywhere so it's just really 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 interesting that even the comments are picking up on the fact that Beyonce didn't tag you in this, and also, even if she is wearing it, it's her makeup artist decision, and for you to literally, one of your main posts promoting your brand be that Beyonce is wearing it, and very clearly she has no idea she's wearing it, is so ethically weird, like it really, really, really is. Where is it? Where was it? Um, okay, so it's this look. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Beyonce, where are you? Queen, where are you? I don't know which one it is. Anyways. Okay, I don't know which one it is. Um, but it could have literally been the makeup artist as well, if you think about it. Okay, I don't know what. Fierce, though. It's just really weird, and it's really tacky as well, and it almost shows that you have, like, no... Um... No... What's the word? No confidence in your brand. That you have all of these posts promoting your brand, right? Like, that you have paid so much money for, and you're reposting a Beyoncé picture, and the chat, or the, like, chat are literally commenting... I fucked that up. The comments are literally chatting. There you go about the fact that, like, okay, but does Beyonce know that you wore it? And, like, this doesn't even look like she's wearing it, but, like, why are, Why is this such a big focus for you? Anyway, so here we have his website. Um, here we go. So, the Create Paints. You know what I mean? With so much respect, I'm so over how, like, when brands want to go the simple route and it just looks like the bare bones, like white label that they've bought off of a really cheap site, it just feels lazy to me. And kind of everything that I've said about James's brand, it just feels too late, lazy, filled with lies. And I just kind of am like, whatever. You know what I mean? What do we all think? It, 
I actually was expecting more because my opinions of James aside, he's been someone who credits himself on his brand great ideas and stuff. And, you know, he's one of the more, you know, uh, creative ones in the field. And I'm like, you're calling yourself one of the, the, the most creative people in the field and this is something you launch? I wonder if, hold on, for example, let me pull up Jeffree Star Cosmetics. I think it's an interesting parallel, right? Okay, shop. Um, okay, we'll do eyes because I guess that that is... All right, so if we compare, so we have James. This is his big launch. This is like the big launch. This is like your first launch, right? So this is of all your makeup, of your eyes. And then let's do one of Jeffrey. Um, this is not me loving Jeffrey, but I'm saying there's an idea. Okay, so this is a banana palette. Look at this. Yellow and in the shape of a banana. Nothing revolutionary, but but looks like we're buying something, right? Um... One thing Jeffrey's always done good is these, like, box releases. You know what I mean? Like, this is, like, a box, and, you know, it doesn't look cheap. This looks cheap with so much love and so much respect. Blood lust, you know, in this kind of casing, velvet. You know, there's such a difference of quality here. And by the way, Jeffrey's is cheaper which is crazy. This literally sounds like I'm promoting Jeffrey, but not the cremated palette. Um, but you know what I mean? It's like, if I was to buy makeup, like even this one, Pink Religion, I think one of my friends actually has this. Um, it looks like a Bible, right? $52, all the colors. And this one is like 150 and looks like this. It just, I'm, I just think that it's, yeah, like this took you three years. Eh, that's my review and take on the makeup launch. I'm just kind of like, 150 for that? Eh. Well, there's that.